is about uh, Street Fighter, uh, sorry about uh, Radar. <laughs> it's really about Street Fighter, but I put Radar in the title, so <laughs> I can come here and talk about Street Fighter. Uh, my name is Pau, Pau Oliva, uh, also known as POF on, on Twitter. Sí. Uh, I'm a security consultant with IOActive and uh, mainly I play st Street Fighter all the time except when I'm free then I work. Uh, I'm also the developer of Fightgate which is a, a tool to play old arcade games on, uh, on a computer over the internet so you can play against other people around the world. Uh, in this presentation we will talk about the uh, Capcom Play System 2 or CPS2. Uh, I will give a little bit overview of, of what, what is it and uh, what security features it had. Uh, and then I will talk a little bit about the, the game itself, the Super Street Fighter 2X or 2 Turbo, which is the Japanese version of uh, Street Fighter. And um, then I will uh, explain a little bit uh, what Radar 2 has in common with this thing. This will be the last part the, of the presentation and some demos as well. So basically the CPS2 is a system from Capcom that was released many, many years ago. Uh, it's, uh, it consists of two boards, the A board and the B board. The A board is like the main board of the like a, if you think of a console, it is like the console and the B board is like the cartridge for the game. So it needs both to, to be able to run. Um, it's a, the CPU is a Motorola 68K. Uh, and it has a Z80 CPU for the sound. The display is like a 4K, no sorry, it's a 384 uh, for uh, 224. So it's a very, very small. So if you plug this into a modern HDMI system, it has to do upscaling and it sucks. So we play this on, on CRT TVs. Uh, so a bit of history, the CPS2, which was the first uh, system that, that Capcom uh, released, uh, that the games were very easy to copy because it didn't have any security features. and uh, there were some bootlegs or uh, unauthorized copies that appear. Maybe some of you remember the Ra Rainbow Edition of Street Fighter, which was one that had like the Hadoukens, multiple Hadoukens on screen and things like that. Uh, in, in this platform, there were like three popular uh, Street Fighter 2 games. The, the World Warrior, which was the, the, the first one, which uh, was also very popular here in, in Spain. Um, after the World Warrior, there was the Champion Edition or the Dash. Uh, the difference with the World Warrior was that you could do mirror matches, like if you you can play Ryu or Ryu against Ryu, uh, and uh, you you can also choose like the final bosses: uh, Dictator, Boxer, Sagat, and uh, Claw. Uh, and then uh, there was the uh, Street Fighter. To turbo hyper fighting, which was a uh, basically they, they they speed up the game, so they, they did a lot of they implemented that doing frame skipping, and it was very fun because it was fast. Uh, then they released the CPS two, which was basically a CPS one with a faster processor, and uh, they encrypt the the game ROMs so that the Chinese or Koreans or whoever was doing the, the, the bootleg copies couldn't do it. And um, 
So they made the Super Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. In this game, they added uh, four new characters, Kami, Fei Long, T-Hawk, and DJ. And people liked those four new characters, but uh, they went back to the speed of the, of the Champion Edition. And by, by the time people already got used to the speed of the turbo, which was the coolest one, so uh, it was. It has some good things, but it had some bad things because it was slow. So then they made like the definitive version, which was the Super Street Fighter II Turbo. Had the new uh, challengers of the Super and had the speed of the Turbo. And this was like the final uh, competitive version of the game because it. Uh, for competitive play, they removed the, the like the bonus stages, like the barrels, the car, and whatever was interrupting you when you were playing against an, another human. Uh, and then some years later, uh, Capcom tried to do a Hyper Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Edition, but it was a mistake in my opinion. It's very similar to the 2 Turbo, which is the one that is still used competitively nowadays. Uh, but they put also, they, uh, they make possible to choose the characters from uh, World Warrior and Champion Edition. So uh, it's totally unbalanced because the, the, the characters from the old games have powers that should not have against uh, characters from the new. So the balance is totally broken. And the, the best version is the uh, Super Turbo, as we call it, or Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, like the full name. Uh, so, uh, what did Capcom do in this uh, CPS2 in order to, to stop the Chinese from, from making bootlegs? So, they, they put a battery and, and they put a, a memory uh, SRAM uh, containing the decryption keys needed for the games to run in, in RAM. So, if the battery dies, the game dies. So, the... Uh, uh, this battery usually lasts like five to ten years, uh, but after that, uh, the game dies. Uh, this is like it's called the suicide battery because it's what, what the game suicide themselves when the battery dies. Uh, it has, as you can see uh, here, a small capacitor, so you have time, like you have a few minutes to replace the battery every few years in order to to keep the game. Running. The capacitor uh, keeps the power in the RAM for a, for a short while. Uh, so, uh, in in January 2001, the CPS2 Shock Group, which was uh, formed by Razola and Crash Test, and with the help of Charles McDonald, they obtained uh, an encrypt program data uh, by doing a hardware hack. This means that uh, at the time, they published the XOR difference tables to be able to play, to, to be able to, to emulate those games on, on main, which was the uh, emulator, the best emulator at the time. Uh, so this means that in order to play the game, you need to have the ROMs, which were probably like a, a thousands of megabytes, but very few. And um, and then you also need the eight gigabytes of differential table in order to, to run the game. We are talking about 2001. Remember the size of the disks <laughs> at that time. So uh, it was not the best setup, but at least the emulation was possible. Uh, then in uh, 2007, uh, the encryption was fully reverse engineered by Andreas Naif and Nicolas Almoria. The, the main author, and they realized that the encryption only affects uh, opcode, opcodes, not data. And it consists of a two four-round phase networks with a 64-bit key. Uh, and this algorithm, uh, the phase network, was implemented in the uh, in main for all uh, known CPS2 games. Be before this. They thought that the CPU was not a normal um, Motorola 68K. They thought it had a special set of opcodes because it was 
really weird when they dumped the, the, the ROMs and they saw the encrypted ROMs. They thought that it was a specially made CPU for Capcom from Motorola, but it was not true. It was, it ended up that it, it had this system where first thing that the board does when it's plugged is uh, treat the decryption keys from RAM, from the battery baked RAM, decrypt the opcodes in runtime and, and run them, run the decrypted code. Uh, so this is like the usual memory map. Well, some games change, but <coughs> most games is like that. Uh, for uh, CPS2, you see that the, the, the main program is uh, starting at zero, and then in, uh, in uh, 4000 whatever, has the, the encryption, like the battery memory. And then is important also is address here, like the main memory, like the RAM that the, the platform uses for, for everything that happens during the game. Uh, the rest is probably not important. Uh, so what happens when we have... Oh. <laughs> we have a small problem. <laughs> All good? Okay. So uh, one, what happens when the battery dies? Uh, usually you, you have a de dead, dead game and you cannot run it anymore. So for many years, that games were sold very cheap because nobody was able to, to, to do anything with them. Uh, and many games died because th this was a, a old platform and people didn't remember to change the batteries every five years, so many games died. Uh, but then uh, the CPS2 shop come, came with a, a way to, to what was mainly Rasola that came with this way initially, to, to be able to produce uh, decrypted ROM images so that it ran without the, the, uh, without the battery, it ran without the encryption uh, keys in memory. So what they do is uh, decrypt all the data uh, and have a fully decrypted ROM image, patch all the read and writes to the region uh, where the uh, battery uh, memories, like, the, like where the encryption keys are, uh, uh, to go to, to the bottom of the normal work RAM. So if you look at the, here, you see the main memory, so the, it, uh, they change like the encryption uh, part for the bottom of the main memory. And then patch all their routines not to clear this region during any memory clearing activities, and patch uh, any part of the code that uses like the, the bottom of the world RAM to use a different region, which is probably very few parts, but that's okay. Uh, and then reprogram the EPROMs with the decrypted ROM images, decrypt and patched ROM images. Then uh, remove the battery from the board, uh, short the two leads of the capacitor to, to make sure it doesn't have any, any power there, and uh, boot the game, boot the game, and, and it will run an, an encrypted copy without battery and without encryption. So, uh, for many years, this uh, this has worked very well. Um, these boards are usually called Phoenix Edition boards because Rasola, the guy that came up with this method, um, uh, was like doing this, uh, doing pre-patched ROM. So it, you you could buy the ROMs from him. For any game, he will send you the already patched uh, EPROMs. Uh, and then after a few years, also there was a project called Avalanche, uh, and they uh, made similar uh, clean decrypted ROMs without uh, any patches. The, the originals, the ones created by Rasola, had uh, some patches on it, and some people didn't like it because they said that it was like not the exact original game. Also, the, the, when the game is finished, it doesn't has it doesn't have uh, the, the same uh, collector value like when, as when it is not. Like a game that has the still the battery uh, for Super Turbo, it can cost on a buy nowadays around 300, 400 dollars. And uh, when it's uh, when it when it's a Phoenix edition or when it doesn't have battery, 
it's probably half of the of the price. <coughs> uh, and finally, uh, in April this year, uh, Eduardo Cruz, which is an uh, arcade hacker from, from here, from Spain, and uh, uh, Ian Court and Artemio Urbina, they w were able to, to reverse engineer the, all the security programming of the CPS2. And mainly they use an Arduino to be able to put back the encryption keys on the uh, battery baked RAM. So you are able to take a board that has been, that has suicide and uh, make it live again. So you have a zombie board. But it's normal, it runs the, the original encrypted ROMs again. So if you buy now the uh, games that are half of the price because they, they uh, run without battery, you can apply this process and uh, you get double the price for, for, for nothing. Uh, but it's very good for, for restoration of, of original arcade boards and running the games originally. So as a, a security timeline, the CPS2 were released in 1993. Uh, eight years later, the XOR differential tables were published that made emulation possible. 14 years later, the encryption keys were obtained. And 23 years later, the security programming has been reverse engineered. So it's like, not like normal console systems nowadays that are hacked every year in CCC, but uh, it took a long, long time in order to, to fully understand how that worked. Mainly because there is also less community than for a PlayStation or a modern system. But, uh, so now I'm going to talk a bit about the game itself. Uh, so first thing you do when you get one of those games, you want to debug it, like playing is for losers. Uh, so <laughs> you, you usually use main, which has a very nice debugger. Uh, if you launch it with a flag minus debug and then the name of the game, uh, it will open the debugger window and uh, you have also a memory uh, window. Uh, this address here, FF844E, is like the uh, base for the player uh, one. Like everything, like his uh, life is there, he, what he's doing on the screen, his position, he, everything is uh, from here onwards. And for the player two is uh, an offset of 400 more. Uh, so this is what the name the booger looks like and the memory window on the upper side. You can put breakpoints, white points. Uh, uh, there is also main RR, which has a very nice uh, Lua uh, hooks. Uh, you can use memory read, read byte, memory read word, and you can do a lot of things with uh, Lua scripting. Uh, in, in here, for example, this is a this is a example that shows if you have to block low or high depending on what the opponent is doing. But you can do very crazy stuff with that. Um, for cheating, so there are two two type of cheats. What's usually called RAM cheats. What uh, what you do is using main, you change a value that is in memory, and you tell main. So the uh, value at this address will be always that, and main does this for you. Uh, and there are also the ROM cheats, so something that you can also apply to real hardware, uh, that you can burn in a, in a real EPROM and, and use in a, in a real arcade. Uh, the ROM cheats, you can only do them in, in, in emulators. Uh, so, for example, uh, here using the main de debugger, uh, I'm going to try to find where is the uh, address of the timer. So, for with the, for example, uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to do with this was writing a proper training mode because all modern fighting games have a training mode, but all didn't. So. Uh, for a training mode, you need the time to be infinite, right? So uh, first thing you do is try to find how you can make the timer stop. So uh, 
here you see that the time uh, is 34. Uh, so uh, I'm going to run the uh, main debugger and uh, try to, to see where in memory the, the, the D34 is. So here, basically I did a cheat in it and then uh, now the time is 33 and then I do a cheat next. Uh, so it shows me all the values that has decreased by one since we did the cheat in it. So the timer went from 34 to 33 and you can see here uh, the initial value was 34, the current value is 33. So we know that in FF8DC is the uh, is the memory address for the for the timer. So uh, Uh, well, it's the same screen as before in the video. So with with this, you can write uh, a main cheat, which basically says that in this address, in FF8DC, the value will always be 99. So the timer will never decrease, will always be at 99. Uh, for main cheats, it are, are write, written in XML format, the syntax is quite uh, self-explanatory. There are only some things that you need to know, like the uh, main CPU. It's usually what you are going to use unless you are playing with audio or other things. But for most of the cheats that you want to do, it's main CPU here. Uh, then it has this P, which is the memory space that, that, that you're going to poke uh, for, for, uh, for anything that is in RAM, you use a P. For anything that is in ROM, uh, you use an M, but for uh, the M will change the encrypted ROM. So if, if it's uh, encrypted memory, you use uh, the O, which is an op opcode write that will uh, change the decrypted opcodes. Um, then um, this B here, which is byte word, double word, or uh, quad word. Uh, and then the address and the value that you want to put. Uh, this is another example. Here the value is FF8478, which will be like the energy bar. So if you put a 90 there, uh, the energy will always be 90. So when you get hit, the energy bar will not decrease, right? So it's the same example as with the time, but with the energy. So we had a, like a very, we have like a very basic training mode. Energy is not decreasing. Uh, time is not decreasing with, with this, just these two cheats. But these are memory cheats that we do uh, in main, but we want to do something on the ROM itself, something that we want, that we can uh, do on the real hardware. Um, so to, do, to write something more advanced, uh, you also have watch points, watch points in the main debugger. So you, you could tell, uh, here, for example, uh, the player two has the full uh, energy, and I'm going to, so from here, we have this value, FF8478. This is for player one, but if you add 400 here, will be the same for player two. So it's FF8878. Uh, and um, so I'm going to look at everything that uh, writes to this memory so I want to see where the program counter is when when uh, there is a write here. So this is what we do here. I'm going to show you later a bigger screenshot. So mainly I go to the player two, uh, hit him, throw him or whatever, uh, and I see here all the uh, values of the program counter when the value of the energy for the player two is modified. So here we see a big, bigger one. So we know all the places in the code where, that have proteins that modify the, uh, the energy bar for the player. 
So if we patch those, we can write probably a proper uh, training mode better than the one that we had before because now we had to we had to page code uh, to to patch code, not RAM. Uh, so patching Motorola 68K for dummies is like the most advanced slide on on this thing. So an op is a 4A71. <coughs> Uh, a branch if equal that will uh, jump if the previous uh, test instruction is uh, equal starts with 67. A branch if not equal starts with 66 and it will jump uh, if the previous test is not equal. So usually when you patch you do two type of things. Uh, invert the condition, so you want to invert the branch if equal for a branch if not equal for the other. So you just swap 66 for a 67 for a 67 for a 66. It will, this will invert the condition. Or if you just want to go through uh, and just skip a piece of code, you just knob it. So you just put the 4A71 and it will knob the, the condition. Um, so here there is an example. You see the branch if equal is the 671A. Uh, so if you put a 66 instead of a 67 in there, it will uh, convert that to a branch if not equal. And, uh, so now I'm going to talk about the radar part. Uh, so if you want to decrypt and encrypt uh, CPS2 ROMs. Now, the only tool that it exists is one called Xcopy. It was created by a Japanese guy in 2007 in a hosted in geocities.jp, and it's a 404 right now. It doesn't exist anymore. And mainly, if you search for this program on the internet, it's almost impossible to find it. Uh, you need to, to, to download it for very uh, pages with naked women on, on there. Uh, and you get probably a nice present with the, with the book. But, uh, so it's quite difficult to find something that works. And also this tool has some bugs, but it's okay. Uh, so this was until now. Uh, now we have support for CPS2 crypto in Radar2. Uh, so to do this, we take the CPS2 decryption algorithm from main. It's in the, in the main source in this path. Uh, we add it to Rahash2. Rahash2 is a tool that has support for many hash function and crypto function uh, inside Radar. Uh, then, uh, we also need to invert the phase tail to, to be able to support encryption because MAME only decrypts ROMs but it has not encrypted. And in order to, to patch ROMs, we need first decrypt it, patch it, and then re encrypt it. So we need to support encryption too. And then to make Pancake happy, we have to, to write a test case in rather two regressions. Uh, so in the example of the Time here uh, we we see that uh, the time is now is here 69. I don't know if you can see it in the screen. So uh, <coughs> here here it's moving the VCE here, uh, which is the, the instruction that we put in F F F eight zero zero this VCE. So it will uh, put the 68 that is in here in the uh, memory region that uh, is the real uh, time. So if we just change this address for an address that doesn't have the timer value, or if we just knock this thing, uh, we will uh, do a ROM patch that will make the infinite timer. So with a uh, radar, we can just write two knobs. If you remember, the knob was 4A71. Uh, 
one. So we write this two times because the instruction is uh, is four bytes. And we have here two knobs. Uh, and with this, we, we, we knob the, the thing that was writing the, the timer value in memory. So we keep writing the timer value in memory. So the memory will always be 99 when the game starts. So uh, the, the timer will not move. Uh, I have two little demos for this. So basically, uh, we unzip the, the ROM. We use uh, the rahash with minus D to decrypt, uh, and then CPS2, which is the algorithm. With the S, we pass the key, which is, this is the key that is in the uh, memory region, uh, in the memory, uh, memory uh, battery-baked memory. Uh, so it's the encryption key. So with this, we, we create a decrypt uh, ROM file. Then we, we just patch uh, this offset, uh, F, E, 8, E, uh, and we put the two knobs here. This will do the infinite time thing. And then we free encrypt the ROM, and we zip it again. So. We run this, now we have a patched ROM. <coughs> now we run main. It says that one of the ROMs is incorrect because it doesn't uh, has the checksum proper, properly. It's not, it's not having the same checksum that main expects, but it works anyway. So now. Uh, so here, Mame is complaining about wrong checksums. Uh, now for the second demo, I, it's a, a big, bigger one. It's a full patch that was done by Jet Possum, which is a very nice guy who does a lot of uh, ROM hacking stuff. And uh, he, he did a very nice training mode uh, for, for ST. So I will use his uh, patches for, for this demo. And so it's exactly the same as before, but in this case, we need to we need to patch two ROMs, the 0, 03 and the 0, 04. Now, when we run the game. Thank you. 
future work for the uh, encryption and decryption stuff. Now there is a hard code value, which is the upper limit, which for most games is like that, but there are some games that have it different. Uh, I did not have a, like a command line switch in Radar in, in Rahash 2 to pass it, so I left it as a defined, but maybe we can pass it through a, a environment variable, variable or something, so I need to think of a proper way to, to, to pass this as an argument or to, to give it to Rahash. And also probably support CPS3, which should be like the same steps that we did for CPS2, take, taking the code from main and applying to Radar. But I really haven't looked into CPS3 uh, yet. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, you have five seconds left. <laughs> so if anybody wants to play, I accept uh, challenges. <laughs> the CRC or the keep up with main, is that also passable? Or is that there's just an extra step to go fix the checksum? Oh, it, that CRC is not in the ROM itself. So it's a main has the checksums of all the ROMs that it has to run to make oh. sure that they are valid. So it's, you have to patch main in order to fix that. Since uh, 1991? No, no, I, I started playing this maybe two or three years ago. <coughs> Any other question or challenge? <laughs>